You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's The Killing After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Killing After Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Killing After Show. Uh, I'm your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been told that we need to keep it upbeat. <laughs> and yeah. you know what? It just, I don't know if it's appropriate, but no. I will be upbeat as according to a lot of our fans. I know, because this whole episode was kind of depressing. Because it was definitely, definitely a killing. Um... The, it was very suspenseful in the sense of, okay, are they going to kill him? Are they not? Obviously, they did. They did. The whole back and forth was killing us, you know, especially for an hour-long episode. Well, it's technically like 10 weeks that we've been waiting for this death. But, and then well, we've been waiting, well, we've been waiting 10 weeks for him to uh, not get killed, I would say. And, you know, mm -hmm. I would say uh, that a lot of the fans share sentiment, you know. Um, but that is not... The, the case. case. It was here, here's um you know tonight's episode is a little bit tough to talk about because it is so visual you know there's not a lot of action things like that so it um uh, you know it's primarily kind of just talking about the uh, the craftsmanship of the episode in terms of the cinematography the lighting the pacing the acting yeah definitely it was like I mean Peter Ron was amazing Martin give a give a round of applause to Peter Sarsgaard yes you know when when uh, um. Julia Sarah Stone called in, she, you know, she commended him for acting, you know, uh, he's in a very tight quarters, and tonight, you know, he basically just did it behind, you know, a glass. It was an amazing, it was flawless, because you can really feel for Seward, because you can, we know the time is running down, and then it's, it's killing him, too, and, like, when he finally breaks down over the phone with Lyndon, he's just shaking, like, he knows that he's literally helpless, he can't do anything. And, you know, he was trying to regain some strength early on of, you know, oh, hey, now you finally find the time. I got 11 hours to live, and now you find time. So he was trying to, you know, gain some momentum. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, he's he's a destroyed soul. And uh, mm -hmm. he, the epitome of tonight's episode is um, what Seward said, you know, um, it's always a measure of who comes to you in your dying moments. Of, you know, the kind of, per you know... Uh, the people in general, uh, and also you as a person. And I think that says a lot because the last person to see him was Lyndon and technically his son, and it shows that Lyndon is a person who wants to help him, who thinks that he is good, he is innocent. So it shows that Seward himself um, turns out to be a person who probably is good and innocent. Despite the uh, despite the tragedy tonight, Lyndon grew strides. You know, uh, unfortunately, Holder's a little bit drunk. Um, <laughs> yeah. But regardless, he had some words of wisdom for everybody. You know, as Lyndon says, he's good with kids, which he was. You know, so we'll talk about that. But you know, in terms with her, as she's ready to leave the prison, he says, you know, stop running away. Yeah, and I liked how Holder really put. Lyndon in her place, and I like their relationship to keep each other in check. Granted, Holder wasn't in the best mindset. But he made sense. hungover or drunk, but he did make sense. And I think that's what Lyndon needed, especially talking to Seward and trying getting this whole conflict if, if he's innocent or guilty and whatnot. And then she needed someone else to help her. And what's great is that Holder, drunk or otherwise, always has a great sense of humor despite the circumstances like yeah. i ain't gonna kiss you yeah so uh kudos to him, joel for for his acting tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i really liked him he was ultimately the comic relief in this episode and it was him it, it really yeah. was um and you know despite the corny line of i ain't gonna kiss you it, it really it did put a smile on even Lyndon, who 
ultimately doesn't smile a no, lot. No, she doesn't. Which was which was nice because she just came from Seward and she's starting to break down down too. So it was nice to have Holder uh, help her along. Yeah. Um, and speaking of Holder, it's great how he's talking. You know, the shoes. Look, you know, uh, every every moment came back in some sort of way, and you didn't quite know how it was going to pan out. But um, as as Holder's talking with Adrian out there, he's like, you know, you can get your shoes dirty. He's like, you know, um, your mom's going to go ornery. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, you the man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then asking Adrian if he wanted to smoke, he was like, oh no, you don't smoke. <laughs> Like that, I love how that doesn't really process with him. Be like, oh no, it's okay for kids to smoke too. Sure. Well, he's used to street tough kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Adrian, you're acting drunk. Acting. Yeah. I am drunk. I am drunk. So it's, and, but in, in terms of the shoe bit, it's great how it does come back. And, and it, in fact, ties Adrian and, the, and uh, Ray together. Um, cause Adrian's like, oh, I got, you know, my shoes. I got to wipe my shoes. You know, they, they both mm -hmm. got to look good for each other. Yeah, and, and it might be a little bit of a prediction, but I think now that Ray has been killed, I think uh, Holder is going to take it upon himself to check up with Adrian and try to keep that relationship going. Yeah, could be. Could be. That's, uh, that's a good point. I mean, especially now that he's lost Bullet and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of the craftsmanship of the episode, it was great to have an opening the way we did. You know, with a, it basically began where it ended. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we both kind of looked at each other, is this a dream? dream? And it could have been a dream, but it was one step more clever. It was a test. It was. Uh, and, and they got us. They did fool us. Uh, I'll give them that. So I was like, they can't have this killing that we've been waiting for 10 weeks now at the very beginning of the scene. I was like, that's just not, that's not going to happen. That's not going to fly. So we, it had to be a dream or a test in their matter, in that yeah. case. Um, you know, in, in terms of hitting every point of how kind of things, it was, it was great. Um, so much, obviously the show is very real and that's what makes it so amazing is because we don't really, you know, I know you love your rookie blues and <laughs> stuff like that. We don't get to see the side of the police, um, The nitty story. gritty sides. Yeah. yeah. And I like how the show is very time relative. Like it, it's very set in real time. It, like one day is one episode or one week is one week, you know. Oh, we were almost so. at six minutes being six minutes. I know, exactly. And and I think that makes the episode more real and more, it really hits hits it uh, right on the nail because it is so real, yeah. realistic. And, uh, you know, going back to Lyndon Seward, uh, obviously a lot of b great back and forth dialogue between them. Um you know, he, he he didn't have to, but he did put a lot of trust in her. Of you know, she said like I'll, I'll promise to be back and things like that. And um, they eventually, it's it's great that they did eventually find some sort of common ground. You know, uh, she shared a lot with him that she didn't necessarily have to about her own life and her son and him perhaps playing sports. God knows what he's doing now. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how they were comparing sons to each other, like Lyndon's son and Adrian, and it just shows that they're even connecting in that way uh, on a more personal level even at the last minute because it was it started off business and professional but now it's getting really personal and uh you know it's ultimately ultimate well let me ask you this w why did Lyndon do it you know was it was it for her benefit you know as he says that you know she needs to clear her conscience whatever the case may be is she doing it for Adrian or is she truly doing it to save Ray because she believes that he's a good guy I think it was to save both of them. Like, it would help Lyndon in her personal struggles with losing her son, and it would help Seward come to terms with what's going to happen to him and what's going to happen to Adrian in the future. So I think it was just helping both of them in that aspect, especially when you know <laughs> if Ray's going to die imminently and that time's coming that y you want to let him reassure him that everything's going to be okay with his son. Yeah, um, and that was the big thing was, you know, uh, despite everything, there was, you know, the notion was that there was always going to be hope, you know, right? So a drunk holder comes and he says, you know, you're, you're banking on a scratch that, you know, sometimes they don't even do that for DNA. Mm -hmm. um, but at least the attorney general considered it, considered it. Yes. So he didn't uphold it, but he considered it, considered it. which showed that Ray could have had a chance. 
Well, he, he, he didn't have a chance, you know, and Lyndon said, you know, uh, they had that great moment where Ray says, you know, you did what you could, so I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, and, and it's great that someone did believe in him. Yeah, and especially at the beginning of this episode, they both started off on uh, Ray and Lyndon both started off on rocky terms and just going at each other again on the phone like we're used to. And then at the end, there was like the um, level of respect for each other. Yeah. Um, what did you, what did you think about the, obviously the big moment is when, quote, he didn't, he didn't lie, well, he lied to her that he didn't, he was, um, at the apartment at the time, not at the time of death, but obviously later. What, what did I think of that? Or yeah, I mean, you know, and, and why perhaps we withheld the information from, um, as she says, you know, hey, if you didn't kill her, what are you hiding? Why? Yeah, I think it goes to... Ray maybe coming to terms that people, no matter what he says and no matter how much he's going to try to defend himself, that people are still going to believe that he's guilty because he beat up a man. He used to beat up his wife in front of his son, um, in front of his son. So he had all these things that he's done in the past that people, no matter what he says, like no one's just going to believe him. And it's generational, as he said, you know, um, my father, blah, blah, you know, it just goes down the, down the line. Yeah. And so, you know, he's no better than his family. Yeah, so he probably thought, what's the point of revealing the true information if you're still not going to believe me? Um, you know, in that sense, if there is any hope, if there's any takeaway in that sense, it's the fact that, you know what, Adrian could be the first in this line of men to not go that route. Yeah, and let's hope not, <laughs> for his sake. I mean, hey, hey, let's hope Adrian doesn't become a killing a machine. Killer. I I hope not. I hope good things can come from this show. At least, like, hopefully, someone at a young age can have a positive future. But it and it also goes to show, like, the this whole season with everybody. If people just told everything, honestly, straight up from the beginning, it might help them in the end. I guess that's the big lesson that <laughs> I'm going to say it every episode. Just be honest and straightforward from the beginning. Well, um, you know, it's it was great when, uh, so finally, you know, Seward was resistant to the idea of, okay, you know, having Adrian come, and then, he, you know, Lennon kind of convinces him, and they finally, okay, we're doing it. And it was really great to see both Adrian and Seward so nervous. and, and But uh, I like Lennon's thing of he's not going to be looking at your shirt. Mm hmm Yeah. And, and I think that's true because I think when you're trying to make an impression, even though he didn't want to see Adrian, he still wanted to be presentable. Yeah. Which shows that he does care. And, you know, even going back a little bit further, right? So at that point, they knew that this was it. You know, this was, this was going to be basically be his last impression on his son. And uh, Lyndon is the one who gives that great speech of, like, you know, don't. I've been there, mm -hmm. you know, show him, show him the real you, show him, show him a good you, show him the person that I'm seeing, you know, you're not, and, and she kept, she referenced that multiple times of, you know, I, I've seen people within this place, you're not one of those monsters. Yeah, and I think it goes back to Lyndon maybe trying to do this because she didn't really get the, the ideal goodbye to her son, so it's kind of like compensating for that. And having Ray saying the proper goodbye to his son. Yeah. Um, did he ultimately get it? Uh, <laughs> not well, in the way he not hoped, in the certainly, way he hoped, but did he but get it? He did see Adrian, and we did see Adrian wave back. So I think it, you know, it, it wasn't the best uh, goodbye, but it was a goodbye that he wanted. Um, which, speaking to that point, um, it, it's great. Um, one of the reasons why the opening teaser is so great is because it shows, you know, it obviously fooled us, but it showed the personalities of the policemen of how they would act or n not eventually act, as was the case with Becker. Because he, <laughs> as tough as he was, he chickened out in the end. He did. And so it makes the question, who really won in that whole fighting against each other um, Bit Ray and Becker because they've been constantly going at each other, but who really won in the end? I think uh, I think it's a tie. Yeah, you know because uh, Becker certainly thought him, he had him, 
you know, just just the coldness of okay, so the, the sun's coming, and uh, nope, you're not coming in. It's it's uh, one hour before execution. State mandate guidelines. Yeah, and the fact that he made Lyndon and Adrian wait for thirty minutes, a full half hour. Until he could finally tell them, like, no, you can't. That's just a low blow. And I think that was, like, his last kick while Ray is down before they executed him. Well, right. well that was actually when Ray was up. <laughs> he was like, all right, I'm getting to see my son. This yeah. is, you know, this might not be so bad. That was his last jab. That was his last jab. Um, but it was, it was great because it was, it was, A, a jab at Ray, but it was also a jab at Lyndon. Mm-hmm. You know, because she pulled that earlier. Of yeah, like, hey, you know, state mandate. <laughs> but, um... But I don't know who ultimately. Here's the thing: if 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 that was it, I'd say yeah, Becker might have won, even though Seward got um got away from his son. But when uh you know they're supposed to, they're they're putting over the cloth on Seward, Becker can't do it. No, yeah, and I got to give it to Henderson for stepping up because at the beginning of the season, you see he's the the new guy, kind of the rookie who. Um, we don't really root for, and he's the one that stepped up for Becker, and Becker's the one that's looking like a, a chicken. Yeah. So it, it makes me think because Becker, he's just really all words and no action in the end because he there was that episode where he was telling his son about, oh, this is how we're going to hang him and all that. He's acting tough, but really he's just an empty barrel making a lot of well, noise. I think, I think looking back on it, he, he was saying a lot of that to build himself up like if, if you put it out there you know you know your body will kind of go through the motions and but unfortunately he did not yeah and yeah and you know he says all these words and he couldn't even do it himself could not what about uh what do you think of dale they uh they were walking by him and he you know we didn't see him much of him but no. i think dale he he was there he said what he needed to do he got into ray's head and did his part and I don't think we needed anything else from him. But do you, do, so. do you think he won? I mean, obviously, he's satisfied with what he's done. He's satisfied. I think he won in that sense because he did his job. He wanted to mess with Ray's mind, and he did that successfully. So. Yeah, it, it, you know, um, it's inter- we'll obviously talk about the uh, the death scene, but it's interesting kind of how Lyndon, <laughs> you know, I made light of it, how, how she tells Holder, like, you're good with kids, take care of them. You know, the, the fact that, Lyndon is pretty much in a room with Adrian every five minutes, mm-hmm. and they don't—they barely make eye contact, just a glance every now and then, but nothing significant. Certainly, no words. Yeah, and which was funny because yes, they're always together, but every time she's talking to Ray, she's she's always saying, "Do it for Adrian, do it for your son," and yet she doesn't really show Adrian any um, compassion. One up. Even though she does care about him, she doesn't really do think, show affection. Do you think it's because she's upset that, you know, he lied to her? It, it might have been, or maybe she was just still caught up in trying to save Ray at the last minute. She was doing everything she can, and she didn't have time to show affection to Adrian. Could be that. Um, it's, it's great when they actually do talk, and he says, you know, are you upset that I lied? She says, no, because it was him. <laughs> Yeah, and you know we we spoke about that moment where she flips out on Ray, but that's that's obviously the inception of that of like wow you mother effer, <laughs> and uh, so we continue to withhold the information, but it was not him. But we got the truth. In the we end. did, you know, and I think I think uh, ultimately as we've I I think for me, the problem is that Ray was just always he was soft, but he was too afraid to show the world that he was soft, mm-hmm. and that's what got him in the end. That's that's true. And it shows that, you know, even though you have a bad background and, like, a dark past, you, he was kind of resistant for other people to help him, which also kind of hindered him, too, which made him, you know, get executed. Had he been more open to people's help, it would have helped him. I believe that to be true. Um, okay, so let's talk about the death scene. <laughs> That was, that almost seemed like six minutes. And, yeah, it felt like it. You know, it, it was great. Uh, again, everything was used to its maximum today. And, and uh, obviously they're feeding the food to him um, last meal. But Seward's take on it is amazing. Of Like, he know the cook, the chef just knows that I, we're not going to eat it. So mm-hmm. then he'll get to eat it. Yeah. Um, 
and obviously that's his final statement. Salisbury steak is nice. beef. <laughs> it's beef. Um, uh, that wouldn't be my <laughs> last statement. I'll just would, say that. <laughs> what would you say? I don't know, but I know it wouldn't be steak. Um, I think it's kind of I a was. final jab at perhaps Becker. Yeah, maybe. Um, but, it, you know, uh, so in turn, going back to the food thing, though, you know, obviously the weight was the most important part. If if the weight's off, plus or minus, um, it won't... It won't snap his neck properly. And then he'll it'll take six minutes. Yep. And, and, and I think the fact that they had to weigh him again, it might have been Becker's doing, too. Like, just another little jab at him to get into his mind and be like, yeah, you're going to die soon. Yeah. I think so that, and I think, uh, you know, I don't wonder how much manipulation of his actual weight there might have been. Uh, he's 190. Nope, he's 220. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, or, you know, oh, he hasn't been eating, so he's 170. Mm -hmm. um, so. That, and, but that could ultimately change the way everything <laughs> drops at the last second. Well, so. it's, I, it's, no, regardless, you know. Serious. I, I believe that to be the case, and, um, you know, especially the way it was told. And so, ultimately, yeah, he had to hang there and choke out. Mm-hmm. Which was, I'm surprised that they actually did show that a bit. I'm, uh, AMC I mean, is not afraid to go there. Yeah. It, it, and what I love is it's not it's not afraid to take its time, right? Um, I was listening <laughs> to an interview with uh, the creator of The Simpsons, and he faults writers nowadays for for not being trusting enough of the audience and, and sometimes moving things too quickly. And so I like this kind of, you know, as you said, this is 10 weeks to the, this moment, and as brutal as this moment may be, it's important for us to see it, you know? Um, it felt real. Yeah, and, and, you know, we were right there with Lyndon. She's, she's, she's sitting there watching this, and as they say, you know, I, okay, right? So, you know, uh, they're reading off this thing, like, you know, we have the right to, you know, we're going to sentence you at the, upon this time, whatever. No one can uh, lead, you know. No one can enter or exit during the time of the procedure until the procedure is over, and we call death. Mm -hmm. And that's we were right there with Linda, and we couldn't leave until death was called. Yeah, and I liked how going back to cinematography, they showed a shot from Linda's seat, so we got the audience point of view as well. So we just made it all the more real and, and effective in that in the storytelling. Yeah. It's true. And, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of, and speaking of this, we have a lot of uh, eyes of Seward, you know, the uh, entranceway to the soul, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, ultimately, he was innocent. Yeah. It's a shame, too, because in the end, you still kind of wanted to root for him, even though <laughs> he was questionable at some points. Well, like he did you, kill you, a yeah. priest. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But, but I did uh, like when he backtracking a little bit when they were walking him up to yeah. get him that whole cinematography because there was that one scene where he says everything's happening so fast but yet it's slow all at the same time, and they physically visually showed that to us and that's what he was feeling on his way up to. Yeah, and he was very pale. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great work by makeup team. Um, unless that was, if he, if he got there naturally, <laughs> which I wouldn't be surprised with an actor no. like him. Um, but yeah, and, 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 uh, Henderson says to him, be a man. Yeah. Stand up, be a man. But I, f I think like that's the word biology might come into play. The whole f fight or flight response that your body would react to something as stressful as that. And you know, if it's coming, your body would maybe go pale or maybe like just fight back that yeah perhaps perhaps <laughs> um so why don't we do this right so uh obviously this episode was kind of um it took a step in a different direction in the sense of it, t it got out of the mystery right we focused mm -hmm. on the very human element but now, obviously, we have to get back to the mystery side of things, which will be the two-hour season finale. So let's do an extended <laughs> season finale pre predictions okay. part. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Hmm. Let's start with you, Marissa. Okay. Because you, you're getting to be vindicated. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Um, 
I think, because I think I believed I mentioned it last week, that it could be someone in the police force that we've known this whole time, right under our noses. The janitor. <laughs> janitor. Or Fred. Uh, what's his name? Frederick. Frederick. Or Skinner. Or Skinner. People I don't are, think it's Skinner though. I don't think it's Skinner, but fans are saying it's Skinner. And, and you know. For the the writers, they would have so much fun if they made a Skinner, because it would get our reaction and be like, what? Really? And that's what they want from the audience. So well, it's, it's, it's it wouldn't just, surprise me if it was Skinner, but I'd like to see it. Um, here's better. here's why here's why I would here's why story wise it could be great to see Skinner because he's uh, he's the love interest of Lyndon. Mm -hmm. um, she's you know kind of trying to piece a life back together. Um, even though he's married and whatnot, and he's kind of whatever. Um, and obviously, you know, she just saw this, and he's kind of been against her uh, this whole time on that notion. Um, and also, now, this is the second time that we've had reference to Lyndon and Holder kissing, even though it's never happened yet. No, it hasn't. So, that's a perfect triangle right there of emotion of, like, what the F? Uh, that, and that would, that'd be great, that'd be awesome to see. But I don't think it's Skinner. I want to say Redrick first, and then why? Skinner. Why Redrick? Because we've seen him. Uh, he's always getting the shaft in each episode. That because we've he wasn't seen promoted. Him. That's yes, true. Yes, he wasn't promoted. He he got beat up by Holder. Yada da da da. And he, it, that might be enough motivation for him being lonely. He goes out at night. We don't know where he goes. He picks up girls and kills them. Interesting. Uh, and then, plus, he's been in the audience's eye this, technically this whole season. We know of him, but we don't really think of him. Well, you're thinking of him. Is there, is there <laughs> any the red herring? Is there anyone we're overlooking that's like, oh, that person? Mm. Like well, the receptionist <laughs> or something. Well, you've seen mm. him, her. Maybe, but I still think it'd be. Well, here's like, right. So, um, to kind of right. recap the teaser, um, you know, uh, so it's they find out that it couldn't, it it, it could, you know, that, that the murder happened two weeks ago or something like that, or the finger. And so at the time, it, there's mention of a storage facility, and so it obviously had to come from a police unit. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get there. And then uh, Holder ties back into the fact of what bullet called me that night. And of course, he didn't pick up, so that's still yeah, haunting Reddick, him. Yeah, Reddick didn't pick up. You know, so could, hey, could it be could that. be Reddick. Could be Reddick. Um, who is the killer? Um, <laughs> yeah, who knows? All signs are still pointing to Joe, but I don't. I don't. I think. I, don't think I think so. I've always said Joe. Joe. I think ultimately Joe did some freaky, weird stuff. Certainly the videos. Yeah. But I think he's. I don't think it's him. He's a puppet in a greater scheme. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also find out uh, what happened to Callie. Where, where her way or where the other, the other. is, if she's finally dead or still alive. I hope she's still alive. Hopefully we get something out of the show, something positive. Uh, well. Who do you think it is? Who do I? I, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I, I want it to be Skinner only because of how that, what that would mean. Mm -hmm. Ima well, you know what? Why don't we do one better? It's Skinner and Red are working together. Okay. Why? Uh. I don't know. And they would know how to tamper with evidence and go around like and that all those loopholes. That's yep, right. That makes two. Of them. Um, and they they can have each you know they can have alibis for each other. Yep. Um, it's uh, always risky. Juicy. But also beneficial to have an accomplice. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's gonna be sad. It, it, you know the fact that you know we wanted B bullet was our favorite and to 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 know that bullet is gone. Yeah. Um. But what happens to the life of uh, our friend, uh, Julia Sarah Stone? What happens to Lyric? Yeah, I mean, she's she's got this she's, apartment yeah, with Twitch. Happy and happy apartment. We didn't see her in this episode. Maybe we'll just touch back with her I mean, do once we, just we have find a, Callie. Do, do we have some sort of memorial with, with um, Pastor Mike and, and, you know, in remembrance of or, all the fallen victims? Or a funeral for Bullet? Come on. I, I still... I also want to know th this this drawing, right? So uh, even even um, Lyndon mentioned like, how's uh, right? The, so so um, Seward asks, you know, how's how's my son? 
He likes to draw. <laughs> I want to know, I still want to know, okay, what the full meaning behind these drawings. Or maybe there's another drawing that we haven't seen yet because we saw at the beginning of the episode one scene of a drawing, but maybe there's another location. Like yeah. I said, and I predicted maybe there's another location with more dead bodies. And how would he know, too, you know? Like, it's still, it's still there's so... Within these two hours, we have so much to answer. We saw a man die today, but there's so much left unanswered. Yeah. How's that for passion, people? <laughs> yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. All right. Hopefully, we'll get some answers. All right. Well, thank on. you guys for uh, for having joined us uh, so far this season. Uh, we've got two hours in the season finale. A lot to answer. It, it, it uh, it's not going to go fast because the killing <laughs> no. never goes fast. No. But. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, continue to, you know, now's the ultimate time to write in. Let us know what you guys are thinking, what's on your minds. In the meantime, feel free to follow Marissa. At Serafini TV. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter and Instagram. There and you, you can follow me on Rookie Blue as well, as of right now. That's the Rookie Blue after show. Rookie Blue after show. Not the actual show. Oh, Unfortunately. I wish. Unfortunately. <laughs> that was fun. Um, anyway, uh, you could, oh, and she, you know, speaking of, um, See, this is what you people have forced <laughs> on me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like an asshole. Uh, speaking of people dying, um, uh, Marissa yeah. will be doing the special tribute to Corey Monteith for Wednesday the, night for the Glee after. See, yes. why do I have to say it's so jovial? You <laughs> look at what you fans have done to me. Um, yes, we will be honoring Corey Monteith. Uh, anyway, follow us here on AfterBuzz TV. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And, of course, download Adventures of Serial Buddies for uh, the price of basically a happy meal. You help support uh, this grand, um, you know, as big as the network we are, ultimately, it was one small dream, and it was to really connect with fans and talk about um, people's favorite shows. And and uh, 20 million weekly downloads later, later. we're there. Yep. And so, uh, but but we, you know, every now and then we st we love the support um, and we love to know where we come from and, and we think of every single 20 million of you weekly. Yeah. So download Adventures Serial Buddies. We'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.